Hey, hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I bring you guys this game to join Dota Elite. This is gonna be Lajans versus Goomba Gaming, and this is gonna be a pretty exciting one. I think I've seen Goomba play a few times. I'm, eh, meh, 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 says nobody ever. Um, I don't, I don't remember what I see, I never remember what I see as far as strategies. I just remember, I've seen Goomba Gaming play a few times, I think I've been impressed and disappointed equally by them and other people as well. I don't, I don't really know what to expect, let's put it that way. Um, but you guys know what you guys want to see, so I'm not gonna step on too many toes, let me just go ahead and cast what I actually know, and uh, sorry, talk about what I actually know, which is the heroes that are in the game. And um, so far, we're, gonna, we're not gonna see a Vengeful Spirit, we're also not gonna be seeing the Elder Titan. I have a slight suspicion for that, I don't know why, but something tells me that we're not gonna see those two in this game, probably because they're banned out. But hey, um, all that aside though, um, I just want to go and talk about the numbers because I want to see who voted for what. I want to see what percentage, what percentage is the favorite or who's the favorite for this game. Let's see, Lejeune versus Goomba. We are here, and yes, okay. So as far as the favorites for this game, there's a 59. Wow, 50, a significantly huge margin in favor of Lejeune's. 59% uh, of you guys think Lejeune's will win both games in this series. Um, 200 or 21 percent think Goomba Gaming will win both games in series, and 19% think that it's going to be a 1-1 one, one game split. Um, I'm not too sure, not too telling you sure what to think of those numbers outside of, you guys must love your Lejans. Um, there's 177 votes posted, so that means that there's a significant number, number of people thinking that Lejans are going to win this game. So we're going to see how this game starts to pan out. So Lejans are going to this game as the favorites, of course. I was going to try to take a quick look into their backgrounds to see what they like to ban, what they like to pick. Um, like I said, I've seen the Goomba game and play a few times. I think every time the Johns have played has been out of my, outside of my time range. But um, it's Sunday today, so I don't really care. I can cast all day until, until that time I have to go to bed, of course. Because, you know, this thing called a job I want to keep. Kind of sucks sometimes. Uh, but yeah, as far as Goomba Gaming, they most play Ancient Apparition and they most win with Marana. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Remaining. And that's for Goomba Gaming side. Uh, with that said, though, they've won 42 games and they've lost 41 games, so they played quite a bit. And as far as uh, as far as Lejeune's, Lejeune's only played. Sorry, they've won 22 games and they lost 21. So pretty much a similar record on both sides. Both these, both these guys are pretty much the same percentage as far as the win uh, win loss ratio. Um, it's actually kind of scary to see. Uh, but with all this said and done, though, uh, we see ourselves the uh, Vindimanter and also the Witch Talk getting picked up by Lejeune. So they have some nice little pocket strat, I'm assuming. <laughs> in their pockets, uh, one thing in their pocket strat in their pockets. Um, I assume that's where you would put a pocket strat, you know, in your pocket, you know, with everything else in your pocket, like pens and stuff. Uh, but with all this said and done, though, the Venomancer plus Wishdoctor is interesting because Wishdoctor has his Maledic, which is really cool. Venomancer has his Ultimate, which is really cool. And uh, between those two, just those two synergizing together, they synergize really well because Maledic will be uh, able to do a whole bunch of damage because <clears throat> of Venomancer's ult and also Venomancer's other dots. Those are really cool. And, um, I think it might be an easy kill here or there for Wish Doctor Venomancer, but that said, of course, it does fall off pretty hard once people start getting more HP or more resistance, and they just don't care about all of that nonsense. Um, speaking of nonsense, though, we got Ogre Magic getting picked up by Goomba Gaming, and they're taking their sweet, sweet, sweet time thinking about their next pick. Um, I always, always love to see Abaddon's get picked up. I was gonna go throw it out there, just throw out my Christmas wish list right now. Uh, Abaddon would be cool versus this lineup because he does have the ability to just flat out get rid of a few of those dots. Not all of them, but a few of them. Um, actually, no, he can't get rid of any of them. You can't purge, you can't purge Malediction, neither can you purge Poison Sting. Uh, the only thing he can do is just block the damage coming out from him. Speaking of damage block, we got Tyrant again picked up by uh, Goomba Gaming, so they will have that team fight initiation ability. They also have the more superior, theoretically speaking, more superior team fight uh, coming out in their way, so. Making waves already is what these guys are doing. They have the organizer, Tide Hunter, two people who are reliable as far as the stuns and reliable as far as the squad ability. So we will see these guys be a little bit more uh, in your face because we can survive things outside Goomba Gaming. I'm a little bit concerned though because Lejeune's, I mean, they, they have they have the realm open for an ancient apparition. If they do that, we're going to see a core of Venomancer, which I'm not a huge fan of. I gotta admit, I'm never a huge fan of core of Venomancer. Um, I, I think Venomancer is a support and you can play a support, and I think that's the best Venomancer you can play. That said, there's one game I saw with Elder Titan plus Venomancer, and it was ridiculous because Elder Titan was just helping Venomancer do so much damage, and also Venomancer built the Veil of Discord plus Ags, so the damage output was ridiculous as crap. Um, because, of course, because of natural order from the Astral Spirit or Elder Titan himself, and also because of Villa Discord extra increased to 25%, it was ridiculous. But Elder Titan did get banned out on that first ban by Goomba Gaming, so we're not going to see any of that nonsense coming to this game. Neither are we going to see a Jakiro or Death Prophet, two people who can push relatively well. Um, Death Prophet can push a little bit better than Jakiro, but Jakiro can push for free. Death Prophet costs her whole entire ulti, plus possibly her life uh, many times. And Ancient Apparition is in fact going to be the pickup for Lejeune, so we see some sneaky nonsense coming up from these guys. Um, 
space equals created is what they're trying to go for. Of course, we're going to need to see Ancient Person hurry up and get to that level 6. I don't know how long it's going to take him to get to level 6, but I imagine a game where Ancient Person doesn't hit level 6 until about 20 minutes in, because uh, it's just going to be that tough of a game for him. I mean, so far you have the Tyrant to Ogre Magi. Between the two of them, they can probably kill Ancient Person without using any of their ults. Of course, Ogre Magi's multicast counts as ult, so I guess they have to use Ogre Magi's ult because... No, no, they're probably going to use it, but Ancient Apparition is a very flat, fragile person. I'm not sure if we're going to see um, Ancient Apparition play another role outside of support. If we do see Ancient Apparition play mid, I'll be very happy. Reserve, I haven't seen a mid uh, Ancient Apparition like forever, and by forever, I mean... Nope, nope, I mean forever. I haven't seen him in forever, I don't know exact timeline on that, but... Likely we'll see Vinmer to play mid and push in mid lane. Um, I want to say Guma Game, I need to just go ahead and go for somebody who can just kill his Plague Wars relatively easy. Someone with a nice right click range and also someone with some nice damage. Uh, so you can just basically kill all the Plague Wars. I think, I'm thinking somebody along the lines of maybe a Queen of Pain to go mid versus Vino, because Vino will explode and will die very horribly every single time Queen of Pain decides to go on him. Um, also, you can have maybe somebody like a Storm Spirit who can just jump on top of Vinmer to get a kill and then zip on out. Uh, he doesn't care about slows at all. So I think those two would be good picks for him. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't really think anybody else out of that. Uh, also, Queen of Pain would be ha have a nice amount of impact uh, in the game by her ability to just roam around and kill people. Flat out kill people. So that would be always good. So yeah, we see a Rubik actually getting picked up by Guma Gaming, so they're going to be able to steal that ability. Um, I think so far the biggest ability for them to steal is Ancient Emperor's Ice Blast. Uh, Wish Dr. Ultra, I guess they can steal it too, and the Slark gets picked up by Lejon, so these guys are going for full, full on mid game presence right now. They have the Ancient Emperor's ulti to stop people from being aggressive on side of Guma Gaming's side. Uh, with that ulti, they have the Venomance which is damage over time, which is really, really doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't do much late game when people have BKBs. And uh, Wish Doctor has this ult which actually does a lot, when, even when people have BKBs, so that's actually really cool. So Slark will be there to throw out the pounces, throw out the leashes, but still, we have a significant amount of magic damage being the, the um, more dominant source of damage for Lejans. So right now, I think Lejans are kind of forcing themselves to a corner where they basically have to win the game within a certain time range. Um, if they don't win the game within, I will say, at this point, well, you know, ignoring the last pick uh, on both sides, if they don't win the game within, uh, I would say, uh, 35 to 40 minutes, that'll be my guess. 35 to 45 minutes, I don't think Lejans will actually do all that well because Slark, as a hero, he gets a lot of his damage coming from magic. Uh, Ancient Apparition, all of his stuff is magical. Venomancer, every single thing he does is magical with the exception of the slow. His slow is, well, I guess, no, still magical damage. And uh, Witch Doctor is the only one who actually does physical damage with his ult. Um, Lejans, I think, are struggling right now for damage from, like, you know, just a source of damage. Maybe they get somebody who can create, or who can do really well when they have space created from, like, a Medusa Spectre or something like that. I think they'll be perfectly fine. Their lineup will be extremely balanced in the sense that they have a nice mix of magic and physical damage. But so far, they're, the magic is strong with these ones. Speaking of magic, we got a puck getting picked up by Goomba Gaming, so somebody very elusive, somebody that can just blink all over the place, and somebody who can just have a little bit of fun just being puck, because. Why puckin' not? Get it? Puck? Puckin'? Okay. Uh, but the main thing is that um, we're gonna see Guma Gaming probably go for a carry. Uh, I can just flat out kill everybody. Um, Antimage would have been a nice choice. I would have liked to see him into the game. He can just basically blink all over the place and not really care too much about magic damage. That spell shield is so strong. 50% reduction in magic damage. Or no, 50% additional magic resistance. My apologies. And that means that his magic resistance probably sends more like 60% magic resistance. Because you have a built-in 25% and you have an extra 50% magic resistance and by the time you balance it out with like, you know, do the math and stuff, it comes out to I think, I think 60% or 65, something like that. It doesn't stack 100%. It's like multiplicatively or something weird like that. Now, speaking of things that stack 100%, Faces Void gets banned out by Goomba Gaming Squad, uh, which I think he would have been nice for the lineup. I mean, having the having the ancient, having the wombo combo with the ancient apparition ult plus the Faces Void ult and plus the Venomance ult and Wish Doctor, that would have been so deadly. That's a really good band. I love that band. It's a fantastic, excuse me, fantastic band coming up from Goomba Gaming. Very intelligent band as well. So they should be rewarded with some awkward pick coming from the Giants. Um, I don't. I, I, I don't know what the Johns go for. If they go for Medusa, they're going to be very fragile, and they open themselves up to the damage coming out from somebody like a... Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Um, we, we've seen an OD once get played versus Medusa. I think that went really well. Um, Terrorblade is still in the pool, by the way. Uh, I think Terrorblade would be fantastic with this lineup. Uh, Ancient Apparition, Venomance, or Wish Doctor, they, they have their dots and stuff, and uh, Ancient Apparition can cancel your heals, but if you get a Terrorblade inside of Goomba Gaming, oh my god, guys, it's going to be so disgusting. Uh, one thing about Sunder that I just read about, because I read it on the internet, so clearly it's true, uh, is that <clears throat> Sunder ignores all of the uh, all the things that interact with HP removal or HP regen or anything like that, because it's basically it's, it's changing HP from one side to the other. 
and are changing percentages of HP from one side to the other. So basically, if HF Bridging gets his Ice Blast on Terra Blade and Terra Blade's really low, these guys want to go for killing him, Terra Blade just walks up to him, pops Sunder, switches HP, just get like a crap ton of HP and just kills anybody, everybody anyway, even if he's under the effect of Frostbite, which is a big deal. Because um, I think Lejeans are going to be going for the nuke damage. Like I think right now they're kind of pinned themselves into a, a strategy of we're just going to magic you de to death. And uh, Rubik, of course, he has his uh, has his null fill, which is really good. He gives a twenty percent AOE magic resist, which is always good. Tie Hunter relatively relatively survivable, not fully survivable, but relatively survivable. Ogre Magi relatively survivable versus right clicks and stuff, so he might succumb to the magic. And Puck, she's going to be having a lot of fun just juking all over the place. Like I, I still foresee Puck remain. doing whatever the heck Puck wants. Um, but I think Terra Blade would be nice. Legion Commander is going to be a pickup for the Dire, so that's going to be a nice significant source of magic or physical damage because she does have her uh, Moment of Courage, which gives her extra free right click, and also she has her duel, so she can hold somebody down like a Tide Hunter Puck or maybe even an Ogre Magic that can catch out a free kill on top of him. Legion really nice at getting those pickoffs. Uh, but that so far means that Lejeans, they have the Legion Commander and they need her to snowball, and they have the Slark and they need him to snowball. Uh, well, they need Legion Commander to snowball in the form of duels, and they need Slark to snowball in the form of getting kills and being involved uh, to remain. create as much pressure as possible. But Goomba, Terrorblade, I'm just saying, it seems like the obvious Five choice to me. Um, he can be put into here. And I think Terrorblade would be a fantastic choice. You can also go for the Medusa, you can Return also go for the Spectre, of course, but they go for the Lifestealer instead. Nice, interesting choice. Life Stealer versus Legion Commander. It's going to be a fantastic game. Um, still, you have to worry about the Life Legion. You have to worry about the HP loss and stuff. And I think with this combination, Puck plus Life Stealer equals a Nikes Bomb. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Puck blink in, Nick's Life Stealer jumps out. Legion Commander maybe duels somebody, and the Life Stealer just like open wounds her so that person heals himself. You have some flexibility, so I actually like this. And also, you have the Rage coming up from Life Stealer, keeping him alive, and all these things. So. The more I think about it, the more I like it. Um, but still, I think a Terra Blade would have been cool. Maybe, maybe because I'm just, I'm just like stuck on Terra Blade. Like I want to see Terra Blade get played again. That was really cool last time we saw him. But it looks like nope. We're gonna see Life Stealer versus Legion versus Slark and all the crew. So yeah, guys. I hope you prepared your bodies because we're about to see some Dota get played. Let's go ahead and do the call out. Starting from the side of Goomba Gaming on this Rubik. Research tells Rimin, or RMN, playing that Rubik. Moving over to this Ogre Magi, or Ogre Maji, Ogre Maju, <laughs> Maju. I would see Gasha playing that Ogre Magi on this Tide Hunter. We see ourselves Chill playing that Tide. And moving over to this Life Stealer, we see ourselves Quicks playing that Life Stealer. And last one is on this Puck, we see ourselves Exist. Does he even get it? Exist? Does he even exist? Okay, okay. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, we see Exist playing that Puck. And moving to the side of Lejeans on this Ancient Abortion, we see ourselves Hard Skin. On that ancient apparition, on this venomancer we see ourselves eight mother playing that eight, or playing that venomancer, and on this uh, slark we see ourselves era playing him and move. Hold on, down bottom legion, getting a little bit too close these guys. Uh, on this witch doctor we see ourselves C C kid playing that witch doctor, and last one is on this legion commander hanging on down bottom we see ourselves Jonas jo Jonas Muffin Jonas Muffin John S on Finn. Jonas Smith Finn. Let's just call him Jonas Smith Finn. Jo Joan wait hold on. Oh no, there's a name here. I say Jonas some fan. Jonas some fan. We'll call you Jonas. Let's just do that. And that ends all the call outs on the map. Uh, Jonas some fan playing that Leech Commander, so we'll see how this game starts to play out. Ancient Apparition gonna be playing that all coveted support role, the most important role in the game of Dota. Everybody disagrees, says no carry is important, but no. Without the support, your carry wouldn't be able to actually be important. So shut up. Carry's more important. <laughs> and, uh, yep, yeah, moving over to the other side, we see ourselves the, uh, Witch Doctor, of course, playing his support role. Uh, he's just playing Bodyguard, speaking of Bodyguard, era on that Slark. Gonna be over here just doing some, doing some pulls and stuff. And Witch Doctor, I'm not sure what Witch Doctor's doing. Okay, he's just pulling it back. He's gonna go ahead and pull it back. Cassie's gonna be the first pickup for Witch Doctor, so he can actually drop the Cassie on top of a uh, Tide, and Tide actually might be taking quite a bit of damage from that. Um, I don't, I don't know if they can actually go for the kill level one Tide though. Um, Tide does have himself a whole entire no, no ability spent, so he can technically get a uh, Kraken shell if he does end up in a bad situation. But he's fine right now. For now, he's fine. 
Uh, but moving on to the lane matchups, you see it says Legion Commander down bottom versus Lifesteal and Ogre Magi. Not a good lineup for, uh, not a good matchup that is for Legion Commander. She's gonna be forced to pop her um, call just to keep herself alive. Um, but between the open wounds and the life leech and the Ogre Magi stun and slow, it's gonna be really, really hard for Legion Commander to do much. So once we do start seeing like level three, level four, and Ogre Magi and Lifesteal respectively, um, we're probably gonna see Legion Commander die quite a bit. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see her just flat out abandon her lane and just go down to the jungle, or go up into the jungle. You know, we got a Tide Hunter versus, uh, versus a uh, Ancient Apparition plus Wish Doctor and a Slark. That's a really, really potent lane as well. Like, I, I think, I think if anything, I think Legion Commander is going to be a little bit better at a recovering. Tide Hunter, of course, he can go farm Ancients, but that's only one Ancient stack. Legion Commander, she can farm the entire jungle. Uh, the worst case scenario, she's going to be taking some farm from her supports because the supports are actually doing pulls, but that's really about it. Looks like Legion actually going to go do some Ancient stacking of her own. Okay. Interesting. Alright, so we see Tide Hunter and Legion Commander playing similar strategies. Tide Hunter going to go ahead and rotate towards the rune. And now Legion Commander going to go ahead and just, uh, you know, pull the Ancients and check for rune. And rune's going to be here. It's going to be a bounty rune. Double damage. You know, double damage goes to Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter is going to be a little trouble. Wish Doctor's chasing him right behind him. Looks like the cold, their chilling touch was used too. And they place some Zerbo right over there near, or Sensual right over there near the uh, Ancient stack. So Tide Hunter will need to. We'll need to de-war that if he actually wants to get the stack going. Uh, meanwhile, down bottom lane, we got Rubik doing the pulls, so he is getting those levels. <laughs> Central War is getting placed around the corner just to make sure there's no Observer Wars over here, so they can be sneaky, sneaky supports. Meanwhile, mid, we got Venomancer versus Puck. And Puck should be able to dodge a few things. Exists with a nice right-click damage of 67 plus 3, so that's a whole entire 70 right-click damage. Venomancer only sad, only sad a little bit of damage, so he's not going to be able to do much. But he does have the Plague Wards, and the Plague Wards are also giving gold to Puck. And also Puck has herself a nice little, uh, nice little bottle. We have Pings do come to the bottom, they're gonna go ahead and just push this tower by the looks of it. I'm not sure how early you actually want to kill a tower. Uh, this is a discussion that a friend, and, a friend and I were having like a long time ago, of like how early do you want to actually kill a tower. And uh, I, th I, think, I think when it comes down to it, if you don't have to, then you don't want to kill a tower. Especially when you're versus some like a leech commander who can't really do anything to defend anyway. All she can really do is go into the jungle, or show up and like maybe get a moment of courage and then run away. Cause she got a moment of non-courage. Anyway, speaking of things that are not encouraging, we got chill and a little bit of trouble. Getting body blocked by the Wish Doctor. Wish Doctor's gonna be able to make his way through here. And so Wish Doctor actually, yep, there we go. Time's gonna be able to make his way through here. Chill, gonna be alive. He'll live to fight another day. Got into a bit of a situation though, so he's fine though. Two points of that anchor smash. Also, he has uh, he didn't bring a ton of region, but he's used his last piece of region, and now he has brown boots. So he should be able to move out of there very swiftly. Swiftly as the wolves, or swift as the wolves of Icerac. Icerac is it Icerac or Resurrect? I always confuse that. I think it's Swift as the Wolves of Icerac. And Puck gonna take a nice little volley of damage and eats some poison sting damage too. Venomancer, as far as his build goes, he's gonna be maxed on his Plague Wards. One point inside of his Poison Sting, one point inside of his Venomous Gale, and the Plague Wards are gonna be coming through, just pushing as hard as they possibly can. Venomancer gonna go ahead and just pick up a rune. Observer, or Observer Rune. Uh, that would be weird. You, you pick up a rune and you get an Observer Ward? Man, that'd be really weird. Boundary Rune going towards Venomancer though. So we got to fill this bottle back up. Meanwhile, supports on the other side do pick up the rune of their own, and they're going to rotate around the backside. Uh, this just might be an easy kill for them if they want to go for it. I think the Observer Ward... Nope, the Observer Ward might have... I, I don't know. The Observer Ward scattered out, but it looks like they will be able to scout him out here the, near the tower. No Leech Commander available. Oh, the TP coming in. Oh my gosh, they're pinging for it. I don't know. I don't know. Legion Commander just might be going out. She's on the outside of the vision. There we go. They, they do see the Ogre Magi, so he is revealed. And now Legion Commander needs, knows that she needs to go, but I think it's a little bit too late. She's going to be getting telekinesis plus everything on her side. And he, she goes for the heal. Here comes the damage coming from Lifesteal. So much damage as well. And the first bullet going towards Gasha. And Wish Doctor's going to join the fray. He's going to go ahead and die here in a few seconds. Lifesteal just needs one more right click. Gets it. And Wish Doctor does go down. You know, Venomancer shows up for the fight as well. He's going to go for a kill on top of Ruby, trying to get himself a, a payback or revenge kill. And looks like he's not going to be able to find it. Nice little play work getting thrown out by Venomancer blocking the path, but sadly not able to block enough. We got Gasha showing up. He's going to be body blocking here in a few seconds. He can also turn around stun if he needs to. Looks like he will turn around stun, but I think Rubik is still dead. Um, the damage should take him low enough. And looks like, yeah, the play work is going to do it just, just to help out. Just for measure. Good measure. So being a good measure, we got Ancient Apparition dying on top as well. And like I said, guys, the line up on the side of Lejeune is a little bit fragile. Um, they have the Ancient Apparition, they also have the Vitima or they also have the Witch Doctor, who are pretty much don't have that much HP. Speaking of not having much HP, where, where's Ogre Magic? What the heck is he going? Sorry, Ogre Magic getting chased by Vitima. Holy crap. I didn't realize he got that far. Looks like he was trying to deny himself to some uh, neutrals, but sadly the neutrals didn't didn't want to grace him with the mercy that he so deserves. Clearly. 
So we got Chunky Boo's getting purchased up by Ogre Magi, so at the very least he does have that, so he can roam around a little bit more effectively. Speaking of roaming around, Ancient Apparition might be getting picked off here in a few seconds. Exist is going to go ahead and wait around the corner. This just might be a dead Ancient Apparition. Nice little caster coming off from, coming from uh, Witch Doctor. Caster does miss Puck, dropping the ulti, doing so much damage to Ancient Apparition. Ancient Apparition might be going out anyway. Puck trying to get some more mana, trying to get some more HP as well. Tyrant just shows up. No ulti available. Who really needs it? The Gush available. We'll toss on top of Witch Doctor. They're going to go for both kills. Puck Illusion or Orb needs to fly out now. She wants to go for the kill instead. She goes, or she settles for the kill on top of the Witch Doctor. And they both go to Ways. That's gonna be it. Meanwhile, you know, down bottom life still still farming up his items. Hand of mine is fully finished up with him, so more attack speed, more life lost for Legion Commander essentially. And HR person able to make it out that one alive, but I mean still he's not level six, so it doesn't really matter. Basically, the ancient person really all that really matters for ancient person is just getting level six. Uh, Slark, all that matters is how involved he is, uh, how involved will he get. Uh, whenever he does go around and start killing things, uh, he's gonna work on a hand of minus his own, so it looks like he's not gonna be too terribly involved, but he's gonna try to be as involved as possible. Well, he needs to be as involved as possible. Meanwhile, maybe we got Leech Commander versus the Puck, and Puck gonna be throwing an orb. Leech Commander only level 5, so she has an ulti available. I heard a hand of minus used, and it was used by the somebody, Life Stealer, down bottom, of course. It's like Quicks. Quicks on Lifestyle having a fun time, grand old time farming down bottom. You can't do anything to stop me, bro. I'm just Lifestealer. Hand of fully finished up with Slark, so he's going to be keeping up with the Lifestealer. Which, if these guys are tied in farm, I think it's worse for Slark because that means Lifestealer is going to be too survival for him to do anything. Um, keep in mind that a lot of damage coming out from Slark comes out from his magic damage. That's one thing a lot of people seem to forget is that Slark's death pack does a crap ton of damage for such a low cooldown. A 300, a 300 damage nuke on a 6 second cooldown is a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, to be to put into comparison, Puck's orb has a whole entire 12 second cooldown. And uh, speaking of Puck, actually she goes for Venomous. Venomous are going to be going down. He's trying to farm some ancient. It looks like he will lose his life at the end of the day. Exists. Going to be clearing kill. Here comes Leech Commander though. Leech Commander, no ulti available. Going to try to go for it. Ancient Person going to be showing up to help out the kill. Puck will orb around the corner. It looks like she will be able to make it alive. Nope. Chuck Tesla. And Leech Commander does get himself a kill. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Tidehunter going to go and walk around the corner. And walks back around the corner. And walks around the corner again. Uh, so what, what I was talking about before was uh, Slark's death pack damage, or dark pack damage. I was compared to Puck's Illusionary Orb. Uh, Puck's Illusionary Orb is a nuke with air quotes, and it has a nice range on it, which is good, but it does 280 damage and also has a range, or has a cooldown of 12 seconds. So Slark has half the cooldown, he does more of the damage. Um, he does damage to himself, sure, so it's a little trade off, so it costs him HP and also a house of mana. But as far as resources, if you count all the resources, uh, Dark Pack at max level does 50% of the damage to Slark. Uh, so that means that Slark takes 150 damage, plus he has to pay a whole entire 40 mana at max level. Uh, so that's, what is that? 190 resources lost for Slark versus Puck, who has to pay a whole entire, uh, what, which has to pay, a whole entire 150. I mean, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer to me. Like, like, that's basically worth it. And what makes it worse is like if Slark walks away out of vision, he gets all of his HP resources back, so you can technically almost count that out. It takes him, let's say, at level 1, it takes Slark a whole entire, what, he heals 3% of three percent of his health gain. Thanks, thanks Dota. Make me do math again. 3% uh, of his Dota gain, or 3% three percent of his HP gained as regen. Uh, so he has a whole entire 900 HP when he switches to Strange Treads, that's called 1000, so that's basically, what, 30? 30, 30 HP per second? <coughs> So 30 HP per second, he pretty much heals, our, heals up his resource of HP cost in like 5 seconds, so that's really good, especially for a level 1 ability. Well, level 1 ulti. <clears throat> so it only gets better. Anyway, all that aside guys, a lot of damage coming up from Slark is all coming up from Dark Pack. That's that's one thing to consider. Also, oh, don't forget Pounce. Pounce does a whole entire or a whole bunch of damage as well, and it's so cheap too. doesn't cost HP, but it costs a little bit more mana. Anywho, all that aside, my Slark analysis aside, how is Lifestealer doing, guys? Because that's that's our main focus here. Lifestealer's doing fantastic. He has a Quelling Blade, he has Phase Boots, he has a Hand of Midas. He's ready to just go kill shit. And he's probably going to do that here very soon. <clears throat> Puck, how close is she to the Blink Dagger? Because that's basically life still timing. I mean, while Slark actually leaps around the corner, Time has his Ravage available. I don't know if this fight these guys want to go into, but somebody's walking on the side. Puck actually trying to come up top. Vinrich is slowing down as much as possible can. Time to Ravage is going to be coming here in a few seconds. Looks like he will drop it. No, he doesn't drop it. Say he walks back around the corner. Puck going to be able to make it out on alive and chill. Going to go ahead and reserve that, uh, that. That Ravage and Tyrant, oh man, Tyrant's gonna be able to TP out just in time. Leech Commander going for the chase on top of Puck. Puck gonna lose her life here in a few seconds, and yes, she should. It looks like Puck not gonna be able to survive for long enough. Nice little sounds on top of Leech Commander. Leech Commander will not get a duel, and she does instead get Telekinesis up. Ruby gonna go ahead and pull her back. Nice little stun for Ogre Magi, follow up damage as well. Leech Commander gonna go and try TP out. She might be able to make it alive. The answer is no, the zap comes just in time for Ruby.
And Lichy Mana does lose her life for her troubles. Almost like we get the duel off. And uh, Lichy Mana kind of in the same, kind of the same boat as, as um, Faces Void. Needs to get really close to you, wants to drop a big ability, and Puck just bops her nice little silence and you don't do anything. So Puck giving Lichy Mana quite a bit of heartache. Speaking of giving heartache, we've got uh, a lot of lag on my side once again, so Slideshow Dota is officially enabled. I hope you guys like PowerPoint presentations, because this is one of them. Anyway, speaking of PowerPoint presentations, we've got Slark leaving forward. He has his ult available, so he's actually kind of fine. Uh, Slark will be able to steal a whole bunch of stats and do a whole bunch of damage. Look at the amount of damage he's did to chill. Just proving my point right there. And that was only level 3 Dark Pack. Oh, level 4, never mind. That was level 4 Dark Pack. So between Pounce and the Dying Dark Pack damage is like a crap ton of damage. And also, if I'm not mistaken, Dark Pack and Pounce basically have the same cooldown. Uh, it was an 8 second cooldown on uh, uh, next level on Pounce, 6 second cooldown on Dark Pack at next level. So, pretty much Slark can do that whenever he wants. As long as he has a mana for it, of course, which Slark is a little bit struggling on the mana aspect. Don't forget that part. Speaking of not forgetting that part, we got Quicks waiting around the corner, gonna go, gonna go ahead and chew through trees. I think he wants to go kill the ancient person, but I don't know, I don't know if he'll be able to get the kill. Uh, we might see some TP support come in here. Meanwhile, we see ourselves a nice little uh, play where we're getting placed on Venomancer, doing some dewarding, and he forces Puck all the way back. Speaking of forcing Puck back, right, ancient person now bottom, he's actually taking quite a bit of damage. He will be going down, Lifestyle pops out Rage as well. He will be able to run away here in a few seconds. Somebody's gonna show up, it's gonna be a Venomancer. Venomous Gale, not gonna be in time, but he's gonna go and throw out the play where so just go for the chase. Well, the Oh man, Legion gonna show up on side as well. No blink dagger available for her, so she's forced to drop that ability just to keep herself going. But looks like Lifestyle moving a little bit too fast. Hashtag 375 move speed. Legion Commander only moving at 370. And that's disappointing. Actually, technically she was moving fast enough, but she decided not to go for it. Uh, we didn't know what TP support was gonna look like. It looks like everybody has TPs on the side of both sides, so both these teams ready to TP into a nice little fight. Speaking of TP into a nice little fight, Wishlock's taking quite a bit of damage. He might be going down here. He will be going down. The heal's keeping him alive for just a little bit longer. Era misses his leap. Gonna be forced to jump himself. And oh man, Rubik stole the leap. Holy crap. Telekinesis into pounce is so disgustingly, horribly scary. And Jumper's also gonna go ahead and fly in, catches a few people, chill. I'm not gonna be the one to get caught, but Rubik also or Rubik and Ogre Magic are the ones get caught up. So Legion Commander Power Trait's finished up, so still no blink dagger. And Jonas Jonas on that Legion Commander gonna be sitting there with sitting pretty with one kill and two deaths to her name. Slark sitting pretty with uh, zero kills, zero deaths, and zero assists. Not nearly the amount of impact you expect to see on him. Speaking of impacts, we got a Titan Hunter, or sorry, Rubik, and also a Ogre Magi. This is going to be a dead Legion Commander. Uh, next week from Rubik, basically cutting off the path of Legion Commander. Oh my gosh, I think she's trying to go for a duel, but sadly she won't be able to find it. Wishlock's a Cassie is actually doing quite a bit of work. Legion Commander going to go for the heal, goes for the duel, gets it off on top of Rubik. Rubik does go down. Meanwhile, Venomancer shows up. They're going to go for a kill on top of his Gasha, and Gasha will be getting hit with nothing of the sword. Actually, except for right clicks, but he does make it alive. Nice turn around. Coming up from the Legion Commander. Able to have the strength treads on her. Able to stay alive a little bit longer. Of course, if Rubik would have landed his leash, it would have been more than enough damage to actually kill Legion. But I think. I th I actually, you know, now that I think about it, the whole entire game, Rubik had pounce, also Rubik had telekinesis. I think if Rubik would have been patient with the pounce and just like let Ogre Magic get his stun off, so Legion can run into like her corner. And then uh, Rubik can get an easy, easy telekinesis into pounce, or pounce into to telekinesis, whichever one he decided to go for. And that would have been more than enough damage to actually get to kill on top of Legion. So it's a little bit of slight, uh, mis slight miscommunication, I guess, coming out from Ogre Magic and Rubik. But hey, Hindsight's 2020, as we always say, guys. Lifesteal is sitting at almost 100. Actually, no, he has 100 last hits. Uh, he's been farming this whole entire game. Speaking of farming this whole entire game, we got HM Burst Ultra gonna go ahead and fly through. Lifesteal is gonna go ahead and make a grand escape, I'm assuming. Yes, he's gonna go ahead and run away. Era, healing up quite a bit. Leech Commander shows up. Nice little, nice little bit of damage on top of Lifesteal. She has her ulti available, so she wants to drop on top of somebody. Exist might be the target. I think it would be the most efficient target. It looks like Puck and Lifesteal are gonna go ahead and run away to make the grand escape. Bonnie and Clyde status is what they're on right now. Speaking of statuses, we got a Yasha getting picked up by Lifesteal. So Sanji Yasha will be his build. Full on race car life stealer, why not? Time Hunter has Ravage available. So you can drop that if he needs to. It's a TP support does come in. And speaking of TP support, looks like we're gonna see no TP support. Gasha killing as many creeps as possible can, as fast as he possibly can. Doesn't lose his mid tower. The creeps are getting pushed back. I say Leech Man actually gonna show up around the corner. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be a horrible duel. Leech Man gonna be able to get the victory on top of this. HR person dropping the ult. Leech Man not killing. Yes, she does get the kill fast enough. Telekinesis comes up from Rubik, and now we got Leech Man. Did she get the one? Yes, she did. So that's good. Ravage coming from Time just to keep up with these guys. Only catches the Vitamancer, which is kinda sad. But it looks like Ape Master or Ape Mother on that Vitamancer gonna go and just return with the mechanism getting popped. And now Chill's officially in the bad position, taking quite a bit of damage. He should be able to survive this. Ancient Burst Ulti not online for a whole entire 19 seconds. And even if it was, he doesn't have the mana for it, so who really cares? Uh, but he, he might be able to toss that here in a few seconds. I mean, he'll, he'll have the mana for it here soon. 
and Tynan's is looking pretty easy to kill right now. So we'll AA toss it uh, five seconds. Looks like he might. I don't know. No, no Tynan has too much HP now. He can toss it just to toss it. Looks like he's not gonna. Anywho, take a look at the gold graph. See, Goomba have been holding on to the gold graph for quite a bit. It's starting to balance out a little bit, so it's going flat, which means it's not changing all that much. So they've been sustaining themselves so far. Sustaining, which I think uh, for Goomba's side, if they sustain for long enough, like if they can sustain a the lead, they're fine. They're good. Uh, Slark is the one who needs to put on pressure. Legion Commander is the one who needs to win her duels, and Legion Commander still needs a still needs a blink dagger. Um, but all this said and done, Slark is, like I said, Slark needs to be the one controlling the tempo. He has a hand of Midas, so he's not really going to be online here until he gets a Scotty, which I'm assuming is what he's built up for. He's saving up quite a bit of gold so far. You know, mid on the Legion Commander, we see ourselves a lack of a Blink Dagger for now, but she's working on it. Uh, Taking a look at the net worth, we see Lifesteal is worth a crap ton of gold. Holy crap, the hand of Midas plus the farm plus no deaths to his name. Uh, Lifesteal is just just basically balling out of control right now. Uh, he will be in the middle of Sanji Asha, which is more or less a mid-game-ish, subpar item. Yeah, she'll re argue all the time. Uh, but the main thing is that it will make him race car life still. Jump of Endurance already purchased up, Face Boot purchased up as well. He will be moving at, I think he, I think he moves at 5, 514 or something like that. Not 522, but close. Now, speaking of being moving close, we got Ancient Prince ultimately going to come through, kills the Rubik, and Rubik will be going down in a nice little fantastic blast, and now Tyrant's in a little bit of trouble. He has a lot of damage coming his way. Wish Doctor Ulti coming through as well just to help out the kill. Puck going to be forced out of there. Drops the ulti, though. Catches everybody on the side of LeJohn's, but sadly, nobody's really there to follow up. That would have been a fantastic fight to have the Rubik involved, or have the uh, Ravage involved, which would have been fantastic. But sadly, life still was down bottom, getting some more farm. Which I think is okay, I think it's okay. I think the longer you let life still farm, the better off your team will be, because you have the Slark who needs to snowball, you have the Leech Commander who needs to snowball to damage. The less involved life still is, I, th I think. I think the less involved Life Steel is, the more okay it is for Goomba because they can, they should be able to sustain theoretically. Uh, they have the Ravage from Time to, to, uh, Time to, to disengage or turn fights if he needs to. We also have the Ogre Magi there with his control with the stuns. Rubik should be able to steal a big ability like a Pounce, which I think Pounce is probably the biggest ability from the steal outside of uh, Wish Doctor Ult or maybe Legion Command Ult too. And you also have the uh, Puck who's there with her Dream Call just to basically control people or zone people out. Well, she zones, she zones people out with her uh, Wayne Rift, that's close enough. Uh, her ulti will be there. And speaking of things being there, we got Life Stealer plus Puck gonna go ahead and join as one. They're married right now for temporary purposes. Puck can blink in, she's gonna go ahead and blink in. Life Stealer jumps out immediately, a lot of damage coming towards Ancient Person, but this might be a bad position now for these guys. Uh, Drummer Darren's getting popped immediately by Life Stealer. Life Stealer immediately popping in that uh, Rage as well. Puck TP's out of there. Life Stealer GFOTs moving at a whole entire uh, 490. With those phase boots active. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Was it 514? Wait, does he move at 322 with drums? Well, drum, drum of endurance pop, that is. Well, he's getting slowed now by the opposing thing, so I guess not yet. There you go, 441, 500. 500 with phase. It's probably 514. It's 5% uh, extra move speed. So if you get 5% of 500, that should be. That should be 522. So he moves at 522 when he's phased and he drums. So that's good. Also, also fun fact, guys. I did not know this, but I totally did not know this. But uh, phase is canceled upon using another item or ability. I did not know that. That's like a nice little, nice little small tidbit of Dota that's really annoying. It's like that one thing that you didn't know will probably end your life. Um, the reason why it's important to point out is because life still, technically speaking, if when he pops phase boots and then he pops drums, the drums will cancel out the phase, so he doesn't actually get the 500 move speed. He gets the bonus coming up from the 441, and it kind of sucks. So he, he has to pop drums and then phase to actually get the maximum move speed. Which I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure phase boots doesn't block drums. Anyway. Hey, ult to go cut through. Nice, nice cancellation of fire. HP region coming from these guys, but they don't care. They're punching towers anyway. Speaking of punching towers, we got self a nice little kill on top of Leech Commander. She's going to be taking quite a bit of damage. Puck decides to build herself a Dagon too. Ogre Magic is going to be able to murder that lady. Speaking of murdering ladies, there's some top towers going to be getting murdered here. Fortify forced out. Uh, Wish Doctor have himself a uh, more ward, so he's building wards. Then meant to work on an Agonim Scepter so he can get some more damage. Coming out from his ulti. Life Stealer probably, I want to say Life Stealer's probably working on the AC. Well, I think AC is a fantastic item versus Leech Commander, just give you more armor. And also, it's a fantastic item because it gives him a lot of attack speed. So when he does pop his ready to move super fast or attack super fast, if he can attack super fast, Rubik gets hit with a nice little Life Stealer infestation. 
and Rubik gonna go ahead and come forward. Ancient Burst also gonna come through here in a few seconds. Puck. Oh man, Rubik actually taking quite a bit of damage. He's gonna be engaged upon here. It looks like Vinny Racer drops the ulti. Should be a dead Rubik here. Uh, no way for him to actually get out of that. Life's still gonna jump into the middle of the fight though. Wish Shock is gonna be around the corner. His ulti's available, but it doesn't really matter. Puck gonna go ahead and show up. Her ulti was used already, if I'm not mistaken. Looks like Wish Shock's gonna get slowed up, trying to juke around the corner. Beautiful rhymes coming from Tyler to actually catch a Slark on his. Uh, uh, sorry, catch a Slark with his pants down. And speaking of pants down, Slark officially gonna be dead too. So not only does he have his pants down, but he's also dead. Speaking of people dead, Legion Commander Blink Dagger's online, so it looks like Hard Skin might be the last casualty. He's gonna go and try to deny himself to some neutrals, but it's really hard to do when you have five people chasing you. And HR person does officially go down. Leech Commander makes out of that one alive with Grand Theft life keeping. It's like Grand Theft Auto, but not as cool. But she might be dying here in a few seconds. Uh, we'll life a little bit of Blink Dagger. I actually forgot about a Blink Dagger life steal, but that can be a thing. Um, I think in this game, a Blink Dagger life steal would be cool, but looks like he's gonna go for Basher instead. Let's go. Oh my gosh, Lucy just might be going down here in a few seconds. She's gonna be able to Blink out of there. Negative Earn Charge does not. So Earn of Shadows does not cancel uh, Blink Dagger because HP removal. Speaking of HP removal, we got Life Steal removing a lot of HP from uh, Witch Doctor. He officially goes down. Easy game, easy kills, easy go there. And so ends all of the nonsense. Finn Rancer down bottom, continuing to push. Uh, Leech Commander around the corner. Blink Dagger is available for her, so she has to blink on this. Uh, she knows what's around, if she knows what's around the corner, she'll be fine. But looks like the Finn Rancer will be all scattered out. Also gets a Plague Wars uh, Poison Sting on top of it, just to basically stop the blink. So Leech Commander is going to be forced to run away. That's what really annoying for Leech Commander to deal with. All these uh, Plague Wars coming from Ruby. So also be very annoying for Vinman to deal with all these Plague Wars coming out from Rubik. I mean, at the very least, he gets some more gold from it. Anyway, Life Steal coming around the corner. The Illusions are going to be running through. Slark going to go and just sit there. Oh man, nice bait coming up from Life Steal. He's going to go for the kill on top of this uh, Slark. Slark forcing out the ulti. It looks like he thought that was an Illusion, but sadly it wasn't. It was the real one. <laughs> well played. The mind game's coming up from Quakes right now. Pretty, pretty strong with this one. So what, what he does is he basically runs with the illusion, because usually what people do is they, they get an illusion room, they send their illusions out to go suicide or scout, and then they send the real one mid to go farm or somewhere else to go farm. So what, uh, what life still it is, he sent his illusion plus himself to run up there and just basically scout out everything. Right. And said, oh, it's a Sark, and Sark's like, okay, there's two life stills. clearly those are illusions, I'm just going to go ahead and continue farming. And life still actually almost got the kill. Unfortunately, he did pop his, uh, he did pop his open wounds after, or during the ins one of the instances of uh, the Dark Pact. So it did cancel out the slow, but still, if that slow would have stayed, if it would just been a little bit, a little bit more well timed, it'd have been fantastic. Anyway, speaking of things being fantastic, we got Leech Commander waiting around the back corner. She actually wants to blink on top of it. I don't know if she actually needs to go into it, but she sees the Ogre Magi. She should see the Rubik too. She's gonna go ahead and st stand over here for a few seconds. The mission trying to push in. Ancient Burst Ulti coming through. Looks like Leech Commander about to get active here in a few seconds. Ancient Burst Ulti gonna come through. Ruby gonna be the one to die. Looks like she will get the duel off. All oh, the stuns coming for Ogre Magi are pretty strong. Looks like TP support coming in. Ruby will be going down during the duel time. That's gonna be a very risky duel. Open wounds comes on top of Leech Commander. She's gonna be officially going down. Bashed out of her TP. And she does die. Meanwhile, we got Ruby. No, Ruby got Vin Rancher trying to TP out too. Not gonna be able to make it out of this one alive. And he goes down. Easy bash is easy. Vin Rancher gonna be dead. Quicks showing up just in time to help get the kills. The perfect person to show up for that too. Welcome back to stun, also keep a Rubik alive for just a little bit long, or just long enough. Yeah, speaking of just long enough, we got Slark, not gonna be able to kill the Puck, Puck able, gonna be able to blink out of it just in time. Exists, nice timing on top of everything, being very, uh, very elusive, as Pucks do. You know, they're always elusive. And Slark, what do you decide to build? Slark, yeah, okay, Slark went for Blink Dagger, so, Blink Dagger, Slark, and also Ultimate Order for him, and oh man, he's gonna get it around the corner, his ulti's not available, he actually cancels his TP. Interesting that he gets his TP times, but actually going to go ahead and continue to follow him, so like, able to blink away. And here comes a gush as well. Oh my gosh, Arab might be getting chased to the gates of hill. Tyrant has his blink up here in 12 seconds, but Slark has his leap. Uh, so pounce plus blink is more than enough for him to actually do things. And who's Quellen Blade is that? Is that Life Stealers? Invisibility. Wish I could tell. But I think it's Life Stealers Quellen Blade, so when he, when he goes farms Ancients, he just like drops an item, picks up his Quellen Blade, and then goes farms. It's like a token Quellen Blade right there. So we got Scribbles getting drawn on the map, and we also have ourselves the net worth showed us that basically Goomba are ahead by quite a bit. Um, if we do want to call how much they're ahead by, they're ahead by quite a bit. I mean, I don't know what else to say. There's an 8k gold advantage in their favor. Uh, if we want to go ahead and just try to call where that gold's coming from, I want to say it's the difference between the form that Lifestyle has and the form that Legion Commander has. That's basically about 8k. Uh, it's, it's a little bit under your home. It has to be 8k. So, okay, okay. The difference between Vinimancer farm and Lifestyle farm. That's what that is. 
And it's really concerning because what that means, what that means is that Life Stealer is double the net worth of Venomancer. He's not necessarily double the net worth of Slark, because Slark is still doing relatively decent, but I think the simple fact that Life Stealer is at the point where he's at right now is actually pretty good. Uh, we got Life Stealer, everybody's showing up, just gonna go ahead and continue to form Ancients. Puck and Life Stealer are gonna go together because that's what they do. The next bomb is officially online. Will we see ourselves some awesome action happen here very soon? The answer is probably yes. Probably yes. Cold Blade dropped here, they're pinging it. Pinging the Venomancer, who's farming that bottom all by himself. I don't know why they're pinging him down there, but Venomancer is going to be hanging out down here by himself. Observer Word is placed, so they do have some nice vision on the side of the Radiant Squad. And actually, speaking of vision, we see ourselves... Nice vision for the Radiant. They're just going to go ahead and scout out everything. They see the vision where they need to see as far as the lanes that they want to attack. Uh, sadly, they don't have any uh, wards inside of the jungle, I should just realize that. We also have some uh, vision coming up from the Dire, just based on some defensive positions. One, the Roche Pit. Uh, and also the jungle entrance down bottom, the ancient entrance, and also the jungle entrance down bottom, uh, and also the lane up top because that's what they're trying to attack as well. They don't have that tower yet, so there's a point of attack. Now, speaking of point of attacks, we got Tyrant with like, quite a bit of gold saved up. Um, I'm, ass I'm assuming he's working on a refresher, but that's like a crap ton of gold saved up. That could be a hard, probably a refresher. Refresher a lot better, more stun. And yes, that's gonna be perseverance. Life still ably fully finished up already. This guy is like rich as crap. Like, could you be even more baller like this right now? Now, Life Stealer has a crap ton of gold, and he also has a crap ton of damage. He's gonna be able to get himself a kill on top of whoever that is. That's gonna be a Witch Doctor. Nope, Witch Doctor's gonna be dying by himself. Looks like Tyrant's Rabbit's gonna be forced out. Nice ulti coming up on Tyrant. They're gonna be able to keep Rubik alive just in time. Yes, Rubik TP's out just in time. And Jumper's Ice Blast is a little bit too slow. Speaking of things being too slow, we got Venomancer stuck in the trees all by himself. Eight Mother gonna be get, having a nice little moment with Life Stealer, which Life Stealer's gonna just, you know, snuggle him up very nicely. Venomancer does go down. We got Puck, gonna go survive, she blinks away. And we got pings around the corner, they saw the Legion. Legion gonna go ahead and run away. Don't wanna fight none of that. Uh, she has herself a blink dagger and a blade mail, so two items that would be good if Life Stealer didn't have rage. Like, rage makes Life Stealer still better than Legion Commander. She's a strength based person. Sadly, we see no armlet, probably because Life Stealer would just steal all the damage, or steal all the HP anyway. But still. Also, Rubik has a blink dagger now, too. Uh, so Blink Dagger for Rubik means that if he does still casket, he'll have pretty much infinite initiation power. Or if he, if he stills, uh, not casket, if he stills pounce, he'll have infinite initiation. He can just blink in, leash somebody, telekinesis the other, and just do a whole bunch of things. So an illusion rune does get picked up. Or Invis rune does get picked up by Rubik. He's going to walk around the other way. I think the Observer Ward from the uh, Dire... Oh, same thing. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, the Observer Ward from the Dire just scouted out. Life Stealer's gonna go ahead and run away. We got a lot of people over here. Just just hanging under the roof. Quick, gonna go ahead and jump inside the Rubik. Since you for the Dire, they are gonna be able to the Rubik's so Rubik. Might be a nice little bait for these guys. They're gonna go for it. Looks like nice telekinesis into Venomancer's death. This is gonna be an easy kill. Able to get used until Venomancer of all people. Now Life Stealer's gonna go ahead and come forward. Sally has no pounce, but he's gonna go ahead and rage and move as fast as possible can. One hit bash. First hit bash is all he really needs. Like, sadly, it's not gonna work good. Really. The Pinks keep coming out. They wanna go for Roche. They're gonna do it, guys! Oh my gosh, they're doing it! Oh my gosh, they're doing it! Speaking of doing it, we got Tyrant might be a little bit trouble. Leech Commander gonna come around the backside. Uh, the move, yep, there we go. We got the duel coming through. Uh, damage coming from Tyrant, who's gonna be strong with these ones. They do get the kill, so nice victory for Leech Commander. But she's only won about four duels so far. And I think she's only used maybe about four or five or six of them. I mean, we got Lifestyle showing up. He says, here comes Big Daddy. He's gonna get himself a kill. Uh, Jonas is gonna be going down. Easy kill is easy. And also, they have a nice little uh, geometry size somewhere. Uh, I wanna say on the puck. I would imagine on the puck, yeah, Jimmy's side up on the puck, so no vision nonsense, or no invisible nonsense coming up for these guys, and straight into the roach pit for these guys. A boons can come from Life Steel when he needs to use it, probably doesn't need to use it just yet. And Life Steel with A Blade finished up, uh, Butterfly would be cool. I wouldn't see the Life Steel go for uh, like triple, triple Talisman Evasion into Butterfly into Heaven's Hollow, which was really weird. Because it's like, why'd you buy three? But he just did it. Anyway, Life Stealer gonna be able to get the Aegis on top from Rouge. Um, he's gonna jump his TP scroll, I'm assuming. Yeah, TP scroll gets dropped and killed. And Slark has a Scotty now! Woo! So Slark has a Scotty, he can actually go kinda, he can kinda go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Life Stealer. But keep in mind that Scotty does increase Slark's, Slark's HP by quite a bit. So that means the Life Leech coming from Life Stealer is gonna be doing more work on error than it ever did before. Um, this is 7% HP Life Leech. So 7% per right-click that Life Stealer gets, which is actually quite ridiculous. 
So he's effectively Slark will hit or get hit for seven percent of his maximum HP. Is that 100, 140 damage? Jeez. Wait, how's seven percent? So it's one hundred and forty. He has one hundred forty. No, no, no. It's he has one hundred forty. Right, I said the right. No, no, no. Yeah, I said the right. I said the right. One hundred forty damage. Basically, they're crit. Like life sort of crit and without crit. Look at the damage he does though. Life source base damage is actually pretty high. I'm um, pretty much a rapier level worth rapier's worth of damage. Me on the top, we see a team fight happening. We got Rubik still in the ulti from Vinmatch. He uses all the enemies, so the enemy will be taking quite a bit of damage. Sadly he doesn't get the axe the benefit of it, which I'm assuming is what Vinmatch has right now. Which actually you know, Vinmatch doesn't. Nice little multicast coming out from uh with Ogre Match, but Ogre Match does die at the end of the day. Negative earn charges on the Wolf The Wolf actually might be going nice. He does go down. Meanwhile, Rabbit's going for Titan to get the kill on top of that Slark, and Slark hasn't spawned yet, is what he says. And I don't think he will get to spawn because he's officially dead. Um, meanwhile, we got a self existing crew chasing the ancient person. He has just enough mana to TP out, and he'll be able to get out of there. He just commanded down bottom, working on what looks to be a mel Melstorm, just so she can attack him a bit faster. The faster she can attack, the better. That moment of courage, I think, is a little bit better than Lifesteal's Life Leech. Of course, Lifesteal's Life Leech does a percentage of your HP, but still, that's really bad. Oh man, man, dead bash. Dead bash, though. But Leech Commander is basically going to be sustaining a team fight versus Lifestealer. Lifestealer is going to be sustaining a team fight versus Legion. And the longer the fight goes between Legion and Lifestealer, the worse it's going to be for Legion because, I mean, that's more time for people to show up for uh, for Lifestealer to actually help out. Keep in mind that you have a lot of mobility in the Puck, you have a lot of mobility, so to speak, in the Rubik and um, the Titan Hunter. They have Blink Daggers available in all of them, pretty much. Pretty much everybody who has no high amount of move speed has a Blink Dagger. Uh, which is weird because I thought Ogre Magic would have a Blink Dagger too, but sadly he doesn't. Sadly he doesn't, guys. Um, but he could build one if he really wanted to. Um, moving to the side of the Johns, they do have the Legion Commander who has a Blink Dagger. They also have the Slark who has a Blink Dagger, but I think if a fight happens between Legion Commander and Lifesteal, I think Lifesteal should be able to ignore Slark, because Slark should not have any way to actually steal that many stats fast enough to make it to where it matters to Lifesteal. And actually, Lifesteal is moving at 423 move speed without any other bonuses. Because he's just that cool. And if he gets bloodlust, I think he moves at max moon speed. Anyway, speaking of bloodlust, down bottom, we got Legion Commander going for the victory. She gets some victory down bottom, but she does lose her life at the end of the day. 62 additional damage going her way, and she almost had herself a male near finished up. She's gonna go ahead and save that goal for buyback by the looks of it. Which, um, oh my gosh, there's buyback status. Alright, team folks, having on top, we got a nice little able he can use on top of Slark. Slark gonna death pack it off though, so he will be able to survive. And I put the official on the back foot, loses stats um, as it goes. And now Lysol is gonna turn around and go for the open wounds on top of Slark. And Slark can heal up by losing a lot of damage coming towards Quicks. And Quicks, beautiful rap coming from Titan. He's gonna be able to keep his ally alive, but it looks like it's gonna be Aegis getting popped on Chill. Gonna be the first sacrificial lane. We're starting to ulti coming through preemptively. Lysol popping the ulti, gonna be able to TP out here if he needs to. He actually stand, gets himself a kill on top of the puck, and now he jumps into his ally, who's actually invisible and exists. It's like, bro, let's go, let's get out of here. The getaway car is officially there. You know, we got uh, Ogre Magic taking quite a bit of damage, trying to bait these guys back by the looks of it, or maybe try to go for another kill. Is so Puck gonna be able to TP out? Oh my gosh, no, Puck does not TP out. Lifestyle is gonna be all by himself. Jimmy Suicide dropped on the ground. Lifestyle is gonna get hit with a. Oh, no, no, Cassiot. He rages out. And he can TP here in a few seconds, and he'll be able to get his own TP. The getaway car was almost successful at the end. Looks like Leech Commander gonna blink around the side, and she has a duel available. And Jeff trying to get the vision, sadly, not gonna be enough. Or life still making it out alive. Uh, Jimmy Trusai was lost, so that is a casualty of war. Uh, they did lose some economic damage, or they did take some economic damage because of that. So basically, 800 extra gold lost on top of the gold grab that we see right now. But Goober still holding to a very healthy lead. I mean, they got the Aegis, the Aegis was popped, sure, but the Aegis was gonna run out here in like three more minutes. Um, we also see the XP graph is way in the favor of Goomba, so they have been getting the better of the fights, they've also been getting the better of the farm. Um, meanwhile, we see the courier. For the radiant actually flying around in the corner. Uh, takes right click from the. Oh, okay, there we go. He's good. And Rubik stills something you probably want. I mean, it gives a little bit more damage, so I guess it's good. So negative. What? This takes away damage? Oh, no, no, Rubik, Rubik takes away damage. Oh, I can't see the attack speed. Not attack speed, they're uh, magic resist. That's only your heroes. I mean, it affects, it affects your creeps, I guess. Uh, and what I was referring to was um, the ice thing, ice vortex that a Rubik stole. It decreases your magic resist or increases your magic damage that you take by 30%, which is great. It also slows you by 30%, but doesn't slow your attack speed. So, I was trying to see the magic resist of the creeps, which I think would have been negative 30, which makes sense. Anyway, speaking of things that make sense, Ogre Magic around the corner. Nice dark pack coming out from Era, able to keep himself alive just because of that. Ogre Magic almost able to get the jump on him. 
sadly wasn't enough. But Orga Magic with the 4 staff now, so Gasha has the ability to keep up with his team. So we're feeling very happy about themselves. Re uh, refreshers finish up on top of Tide Hunter. We also have ourselves a, uh, what, A Blade, AC, Sanji Yasha on Life Still. We already talked about that. Um, Rubik Blink Tiger 4 staff, so he can actually get into those positions where he still has good abilities. Slark has a Scotty. HR Bridge has an Ags. Also, Venomancer has an Ags too, so a lot of damage coming from those two things. So if the team fight does last for quite a long time, it's going to be a very favorable fight for uh, Lejans. But I don't know. I don't know if, even if the fight does last that long. I don't know if they'll be able to actually do anything because I'm pretty sure Leech Commander and uh, Slark will be surely dead by that point, or by the time people die from the damage coming out from HR Bridge ult and also from uh, Venomancer ult. And also you have to consider that they have to land those abilities, like if Ancient Person misses Ice Blast and Venomantial Ult is there for no reason, or he just doesn't really do anything. Anyway, at least going to come around the corner, nice little duel, they are going to go for the fight, Ancient Person Ice Blast is going to fly out immediately, a little bit too far, a little bit too far away. It's like, exist, going to be able to just blink in here in a few seconds if he wants to, nope, Play we're going to keep him from doing it. Looks like Poison Sting, okay, so Poison Sting doesn't trigger it, cool. I thought there was a damage threshold for, uh, for Blink Dagger. Not on top of things. If I'm not mistaken, there was a damage threshold. Like, you had to have a damage threshold of... I think it's like a damage threshold of like 30 damage or something like that. Which Venomous's Venomous Gale doesn't do, or Poison Sting doesn't do that much damage. Anyway, Rubik around the corner, not attracting the attention of creeps, actually just hit and hold as, as much as he can. Trying to resist. Trying to resist getting the right click off. But he is stuck in the trees right now. He says, I'm right where I want to be. I got them right where I want them. Yeah. Ha ha ha. HR Brush Ice Blast flying up top is going to be able to hit these guys. This might be a good team fight for them if they want to go for it. Looks like it will be a good team fight. Actually, catching everybody. Three people caught into the HR Brush Ice Blast. That's 17 seconds of uh, not being able to heal yourself up. Life Star shows up. Going to be able to help these guys kill the Ancient. I uh, did have that negative armor aura. It looks like it's going to be able to get killed. Top Tower is done for. Top tower is done for. Bottom tower is going to be getting lost here in the turn, but it looks, like, it looks like Leech Commander is going to be forced to back away. He doesn't want to lose too much. Observer getting placed by the Wish Doctor too, so they do see who's around the corner. Uh, speaking of seeing who's around the corner, Vinny has a Blink Dagger, so he can actually get into those positions to get his ulti off, but I think it's still going to all fall in the back of how well can HR person last that ice or land that ice blast. Uh, keep in mind that all the damage coming out from all these guys is magical, physical, or magical flat damage. It's not percentage based or anything. So what that means is they can still scale off pretty hard if you get enough HP, it doesn't matter. Anyway, speaking of things that don't matter, we got HR person, or an HR person. Yeah, HR person tossing Ice Blast. Leech Commander gonna be able to win a duel, nice Blade Mail, plus easy kill on top of Life, or easy kill on top of Tide Hunter. No ravage for you, bro. And Tide does go down. The body blocks are real with this one. And we got the game of Leech Commander, guys. It's officially, she's online. She can actually do things. Bokar still way in favor of Goomba. Life still is still a huge factor in this game. Uh, but he, has he died yet? He still hasn't died. Life still in no deaths yet. A whole entire 16 kill involvement for his team. He basically, by himself, has just as many kills, or has been involved in just as many kills, as Lejans actually has. So that's actually kind of cool to say. Quite quite the medal, quite the commitment. Oh, my bad. Oh yeah, this is game one, by the way, for anybody who's wondering. It's actually, wow, this is game one, holy crap. Anyway, speaking of holy crap, we got the creeps of uh, dying mid. Venomancer and Ogremiser are going to be able to burn things down. And yes, for anybody wondering, this is game number one. The, the score is currently still 0 0, so we're still trying to see who has the victory. But so far, the advantage is in favor of Goomba. They are losing their hold on the advantage still. Life still, like, he's the man of the hour right now, but he's the only man of the hour. Um, Tyrant dude has a double ravage available, so that's a big thing. Puck also has her. Um, has her Dagon, she's working on, or it's not Dagon, has her Blink Dagon, she's working on a Sheep Stick. Um, I think until she gets her Sheep Stick up, it's not going to be that much of a fact, or they're not going to have that as much of an impact as they need to. Um, Luigi Command is getting her damage online, and also the engagement choices coming up from Lachange are getting a little bit smarter as the game goes on. Not as saying they were making some horrible decisions, but there were some fights that shouldn't have happened uh, here or there. Uh, a lot of the time. So it looks like uh, Goomba are able to keep their advantage just slightly mainly because Life is already way ahead. I mean, the network showing that Life is pretty much the one at the top right now. Uh, but Slark is definitely trying to keep up. Uh, we also have Legion Commander keeping up with the Puck, and Venomance is right behind him. So, so far, you have Puck and Life Still being the ones that are like the shining stars, and everybody else on the side of uh, the Johns is actually doing relatively decently uh, relative to their role. With the exception of Witch Doctor, of course, but he's, he's been buying all the words. He has a Geometry site, so I mean, come to Slack, guys. Speaking of slack equals cut, we got Sea Kid, or Seal Kid, wow. We got Seal Kid on that, uh, on that Wish Doctor going ahead and run around the corner. Leech Commander looking like she wants to go for a duel. Uh, they do see somebody. She's going to go and drop out the horn call, and she wanted it. Uh, but sadly, she's not going to be able to get it. Blade Mouse going to cool down now for a few seconds. 
That would have been a nice fight for them to go for that. So Jonas, Jonas is going to be able to push his crease back. TP scrolls are available on Ancient Apparition and Leech Commander. Looks like we might. Yeah, we see the pings. They're saying, hey, Roche, Roche, check Roche, check Roche, go check Roche. Venerance and Plague Ward dropped inside there just to make sure he doesn't see anything, any nonsense happening. Life's still going to go and farm the enemy's ancients because he's still nice. Going to go and clean up that uh, ancient stack for him. We got Organizer Illusion versus Plague Ward. The sequel. And that's about it. So, Power Treads galore on the side of Lejeune as far as boost go. Uh, Ags on Ancient Version and Venomancer, the two people who want to see have it. Um, the items are looking relatively stagnant. I mean, Slark has a PKB, so that's a huge item for him to get. Uh, that will it keep him alive, relatively speaking, versus all the nukes that are coming up from the enemy team. Of course, A Blade does still go through it. But I think uh, at this point in the game, if you're a lifestyle, you can also build yourself a BKB. Uh, just basically give yourself some nice permanent. Uh, magic immunity. You do have to also be very careful with Legion Commander, so I think Link's Fair might be a little bit better. Uh, but that said, you have many ways to pop the Link's Fair. You have the Slark with his. Actually, no, you can't block him with Slark's anything. Oh, uh, you have. Okay, you only have two ways then. You have the uh, Cassie coming out from the Witch Doctor, you also have the Legion Commander ult. So there's only two ways to actually pop the Link's Fair. So this would be a fantastic game for a Link's Fear. So maybe Lifestyle decides to go for a Lincoln's. I don't really know. Looks like they're instead going to go for Roosh. Uh, Bruce's job would be a good attitude, but that won't, that won't allow him to phase. Don't forget that. And most attempts are going to happen. Vim to play board going right into the pit. They do see him. They're going to ping as hard as they possibly can. Lifestyle is going to go for it. He says, bro, screw this. I want this Roshan. Or Roshan, as the old man calls it. Puck, Illusion Orb going to come around the backside. Looks like Lifestyle is going to be able to get this Roshan here very soon. Did he use his TP? Yeah, he uses TP. And Quick's going to continue to go for the kill. He gets, he's getting bashed up pretty hard, though. Uh, we got the Link Spirit getting used on top of Lifestyle. Ancient Bridge ulti going to come into the pit. Lifestyle get Oh man, oh man, time to get dueled up. It's not a good thing. Chill, not going to be able to have the ulti. It does die at the end of the day. Needs to buy back if he can, but sadly he cannot. Leech coming in, going to be able to get the victory. Meanwhile, we got a double kill going towards the Giant's Witch Doctor. Doing so much damage with the ulti, and now we got something happening around somewhere. Uh, Lifestyle was in the middle of it. Quicks did get the Aegis, so he was going to be able to come back alive, but I think that's going to be just about it. Nice patience coming out from the Giant's Puck. Not going to be here to help out. She's going to be here in a few seconds. We can be forced, forced out from Era, and Era can hit the blade anyway. Uh, Lifestyle Still looking for a oh man he can he can't jump his ult he's just trying to get over to the corner puck is gonna be forced to jump to a bad position puck does or face herself and life's still not gonna be able to do anything they both go down pretty much puck is gonna be dying in a few seconds she can't blink here soon but no tornado stick and actually yeah puck does die so disastrous team fight coming up from Goomba and it looks like the Johns will have their first advantage of the game. I think the Gorgas probably going to shoot way in their favor. They did not get Roshan. They did not prevent Roshan, but they did prevent the Goomba from doing anything with it. They basically forced them to just die six times. That's pretty much what happened. And the Gorgas once it does update, we'll see it uh, actually shoot a little bit more further down. A lot of XP, a lot of gold gained on the side of uh, the Johns. Also, Lifestyle lost a huge, gigantic killing spree. Um, I don't, I don't know where the yeah, 896 gold going the way of whoever got the kill on top of Lifestealer, which is actually no, that was pot. No, Venomancer. Venomancer got a whole bunch of gold. Like, if Venomancer wanted to get something, he can get whatever the heck he wants. He can probably build like a Dagon five right now. No, he can't. He, he's not that rich, but still, it's pretty close. A lot of gold went his way. That's all that matters. So yep, gold graph is going to sit right there. XP graph is almost at the zero mark, which means the levels are about to start to hit, or start to hit that balanced out point. Slark and Lifestyle are officially about to go toe to toe. Slark still 6k gold behind. That's basically an A blade's difference worth of gold. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Abyssal Blade is that much gold. If, if I'm not mistaken, which I may be mistaken. Let me, let me check. Yeah, A blade is about eight thousand or seven thousand gold, so six thousand seven hundred and fifty. So that's basically an Abyssal Blade, which is the difference between their items right now. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, but as far as other items for lifestyle to get, like I said, a PKB would be nice. I mean, yeah, sure, he has rage and he doesn't need to get a BKB, blah, but still, I think a BKB would be nice. Uh, he gets a butterfly instead to dodge some right clicks. Yes, this is game one. And yeah, so we, we're going to see ourselves a nice little battle of the, battle of the intelligences. Um, I think Slark MKB would be a nice item for him to follow up with. It'll stop people from TPing away from him. Also, it'll give him a nice little way to just basically ignore the evasion that's coming from Lifestealer. That said, the Lifestealer can still build himself a Heaven's Halibur, which I love having Heaven's Halibur as an item. Um, it basically gives him that disarm to throw on top of somebody like Slark. Slark can't get back at all, if I'm not mistaken. We got Legion Command actually in a little bit of trouble. She actually pops herself on Blade Mail and dies anyway. Lifestealer able to just eat right into her, and she does go down. And her life is officially gone. And we got life still moving at 522. Heck yeah. Who needs phase boots when you're bloodless? Oh, he does. He does. So no boots to travel yellow and quits. Looks like they, they cleaned everything single so I guess they're good. 
you know, Rubik down bottom is going to face a whole entire 17 seconds of hell. Uh, he does have himself on max out no fill, so it's going to be 20% reduction, but I don't know if... I, I don't know if he will actually die from that. He needs to get down to 100 HP for him to actually die from it. He has a little bit too much HP. It's a slight bit. And immediately healed up to max HP pretty much. And with Tyrant just showing up, he has his ulti available and he's gonna drop if he wants to get it. Once like instead, nope, nope, he's not gonna be able to get it. Gets eight bladed or something, gets bashed. I don't know what the heck that was. Once I wish I was gonna come out. Shield gonna gonna wait till the last moment to actually drop himself as Ravage. Actually, no Ravage getting used, double Ravage still preserved. They are gonna back away completely. Looks like the Ravage gonna be getting forced out. They didn't want to fight on tower. I see that. I see it. That's a very smart choice. Ruby stole something. Doesn't really matter what it was. Time to die as he refreshes and dies. He's not gonna be able to do anything. Eight blade coming out on top of Legion Man's head. Legion Man are gonna be going down. Now we got quicks in a little bit of trouble. He can reach here in no seconds time and he does it for Shigo down. Buyback's available for life so if he needs it. You know we got Gasha on that order. Magic gonna turn around, go with the stun, and doing a whole bunch of damage. Man, that Jesus, that ding ding, I swear. Seal Kid almost died to just Ogre Magic's multicast. And Ogre has no eggs. So I was like, was that was that a time four? That sounded like a times four, guys. Like, can you even get times four? Hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, re I'll read multicast while we're watching HR version be a baller. I feel like you can get times four. Yeah, you can get times four. It's a 12.5% chance. So I think he got a times four on that, but it looks like Wish Doctor actually almost died to that, so that was actually pretty scary. <coughs> Alright, Puck and crew are gonna be very, very cautious now. The advantage is officially over. The era of Goomba actually just flat out winning everything. It's pretty much gone. Uh, we see a very, very, very close game. A lot closer than you would expect this game to be at this point in the game. Uh, life still is still a very, very, very cool person to have. Uh, but with all this said and done, it's just basically, I've said it like a million times already, it's basically just Puck and Life still the ones keeping this game together. Um, Tyrant here, not able to get the double ravage, which is a huge, huge, huge deal. If he did get a double ravage in that fight, that would have been fantastic. Life still should have been able to get a kill on top of Legion Commander and then follow up with a kill on top of maybe Slark. Um, but the simple fact that he didn't get that second ulti off. It's like a huge, huge killer in the scene fight scale because they really needed those additional 2.77 seconds of uh, AoE stun. Uh, moving on to Wish Doctor, I don't even know if he used his ulti in that fight, but if he did, did a good job with it because he actually killed a lot, or a lot of people died inside of Goomba. And there's a lot of gold change. I mean, we see a nice little steep slope of drop. Actually, what? So, okay, yeah, I see. Uh, we, we see a slight drop on the side of Goomba because I think they only lost Life Stealer Puck. Well, they didn't lose Puck, they just lost, they lost Life Stealer Rubik. They lost Rubik? Yeah, they lost, they lost Rubik first, then they lost Tyrant, then they lost Ogre, or Lifestyle, then they lost Ogre. So everyone's lost everybody, so this Gold Graph, I think this Gold Graph is strong, guys. Clearly the Gold Graph is strong. It's not nearly as spiky as I was expecting it to be. But I, I guess actually, no, it does make sense because not a lot, there we go, that's what I was expecting to see. But not, not a lot of Killing Spruce are lost, just a lot of people are lost. And at least you're gonna go and heal himself, and negative burn charge comes out. Ogre Magic's still gonna go for the chase, he's gonna go and force himself forward, trying to go trying to bait out the duel by the looks of it. Looks like he might be biting up a little bit more than I can chew. Unchapter is also gonna come through. Time to Ravage is available. Looks like he's not gonna be able to drop. Yes, he will be able to drop if he needs to. That's gonna be a kill on top of Venomance and Mural. The duel comes on top of Tide. Tide is gonna be the one to go down. Leech Commander. Oh, she gets bashed up, it doesn't really matter. She's actually gonna be able to win the duel. She continues to run. Wish Doctor also doing massive amounts of work and quicks. He's moving as quick as he possibly can, but I don't need, I don't I don't think it'll be enough. He's gonna heal himself up quite a bit. Slark says, I don't care, bro. We're gonna kill you fast enough. And Goomba officially on the back foot. I don't know if they'll be able to actually win another fight like that. Like, the fact that Slark can actually go toe to toe with Life Stealer like that is actually a big deal. Wish Doctor also doing a massive amount of work in that last fight. Of course, the MVP going to Life or going to Wish Doctor. And, um, so, well, MVP going to Wish Doctor Ulti, let me put it that way. Uh, if we, if we could see the, the fight recap, it would be cool. But it looks like we're not going to be able to see a fight recap, guys. Apologies. Meanwhile, we got a nice little kill on top of Rubik. Easy pickups, easy. Slark level 25, so. Gold is actually looking really close now, only 2k difference, it's like a bit fighting back Radiance from the brink as far as like, keeping up with the gold graph, and you see the levels are showing that level 25 is pretty much on everybody that's important on the side of the giants. Legion Commander and Slark both have the levels 25s, Legion Commander has herself basically a rapier's worth of damage now, uh, Life Stealer, he still has himself a rapier's worth of damage plus, but still, he's dead, so it doesn't really matter. He has buyback available, but if he does buyback, he can't really do much, so I think Goomba just basically discussing the next game strategies. I don't know if they're going to be able to actually come back to this if they do buyback anyway, so gonna go ahead and just cut their losses, wait for the engine to explode, and discuss things, have a cup of coffee, and relax. Ancient Fisher Pose, gonna take quite a bit of damage, buybacks immediately coming through, they're gonna go for it, Ravis comes off a tie into a nice patience coming from these guys, they're gonna go for it, the big surprise, no GG's were called, so it doesn't really matter, meanwhile, Chill get dueled up anyway, and they do get himself a nice little kill on Warstruck, but sadly, they're gonna be losing life, of, oh no, Time stays alive, goes up there immediately at their end of it, so he's gonna be able to survive, now Slark does get himself a kill on top of that, Aegis, or Roshan gonna be responding here in two minutes, Slark BKB, Life still jumps inside the creep, and he'll be able to jump out here in a few seconds, Rubik, gonna be, uh, be running away.
And this little explosive fight coming from Goomba, I thought they were just basically tapping out. But it's like, no. Life's still gonna come out the creek, and he gets four step forward. Here comes open weeks, top of air, air should be able to survive this. Uh, Ghost have to get popped by ancient version, now we got life still and not able to kill anybody. They're still in this game, guys. Goomba have still some heart in this game. They're gonna continue to fight, and they're gonna continue to make it a game. But John's actually claiming, or actually exposing the ancient. And the Vinomancer Playboys are still doing some damage to the ancient. Some damage, not a whole bunch, just a little bit. It's like, you know, pokes worth of damage. And no, backdoor protection's up. Because there are no creeps in the base. Cool. And here comes Ancient Apparition Ult. Gonna go ahead and hit on Life Steal. 17 seconds worth of uh, non healing for you. And Life Steal was forced to butt back into that. I don't know what he'll get next, but I think Booster Travel needs to be uh, on one of his items. So Curry's gonna come to him. Hand of Midas getting sold. Or actually, oh, he gets his Hand of Midas back? Okay. He picks his Hand of Midas back up and just continues to use it. Why not? I mean, don't wanna waste an item. So, makes sense. Yeah, Roshan should be coming up here in about a minute's time by the looks of, actually, a 30 seconds time by the looks of this. That play ward will be there just in time. It's actually see Roshan spawn. The happiest play ward in the world. Look at him, he's, he's, so, he's so cute. Actually, it's not cute, it's actually really creepy. Like, it's just, it just, look at it. Ah. Oh. oh my god, it's so gross. Ah, oh, jeez, why am I still looking at it? Ah, oh, I can't look away. Alright, my bad, guys. Anyway, let's go move him back into the normal game. Uh, Slark. Using that butterfly flutter because he knows he's flu fl flutter flutterless fl flutterless. I was trying to say fabulous, but it doesn't work. I tried, tried hard, <laughs> tried too hard. Uh, but Slark has a butterfly. He also has MKB too, so that's gonna be a fantastic item for his damage output, and also make sure that he can actually kill Life Stealer, hit Life Stealer. <laughs> you know, Rochelle coming up here in a few seconds. Life Stealer crew gonna be able to get the jumble tumbles. Actually, no, they don't see the rose. Instead, they're gonna go and back away. Smoke to see, smoke to see is revealed. Hatred is up on Life Stealer too. Actually, no, it's just bloodlust. I thought he had a hate room, but that's bloodlust. Anyway, Ancient Approach also gonna go ahead and fly down bottom, kill some creeps. Life still showing up down there. Roshan is officially up, and we got somebody beating it up. It's gonna be um, Jonas punching Roshan in the face. And actually, Jonas, if Jonas does die too soon, I think it's gonna be a bad. Or I think it's gonna be a big deal. <clears throat> the buyback status right now, sitting on everybody, is that at least Marina has buyback here in five seconds. She does not have the gold necessary to actually come back into it. She need if she wanted to. Looks like Roshan gonna be able to get the better of this game, just forcing her away. So much armor going his way. Actually, no, so much HP. Yeah. It's like 14,000 HP, holy crap. I realize he had that much HP. 14,000 HP and, uh, what's that? 13 armor? That's, like, that's 11. 11 armor, ancient arm, and oh wow. Ancient version gonna get that hit on top of Rubik. Rubik gonna be feeling very sad about that. He actually might die from this, guys. Like, he needs, he needs to, like, go buy a casual cloak from the side and just, like, chill out. Looks like, oh boy, it's gonna be close. No, it's not that close. Radiant Ancient is in a but still, trouble. Rubik actually almost died from that. That was, that was pretty scary. You know, the Ancient taking quite a bit of damage. We got two, not just one, guys, but two Super Siege creeps actually Radiant taking damage Ancient to that, or do, doing damage situation. to the Ancient. Uh, they do do increased damage, huh, do do. They do increase damage to towers and buildings, so don't forget that. We got pings around the corner, the ping on one side, the ping on the other side. Leech Commander does not have the Aegis because Roshan's still alive. But we're about to see ourselves a nice little Roche fight here in a few seconds. So we got Life Stealer and crew in a very bad position. Uh, no vision around the corner. They do see the Leech Commander. Leech Commander gonna immediately do the Life Stealer. It's gonna be a good fight for these guys. Ancient Apparition uh, doing quite a bit of damage. Actually, Leech Commander does die. Nice A Blade coming up from the Life Stealer on top of Slark. And oh my gosh, it just might be a disaster. Wish Dr. Ultra gonna get stolen by Rubik Dillon. So much damage right now. Like, do you even see me, bro? Rubik did do his due diligence as far as keeping his, uh, keep his team in this game. Life Stealer does go down. Time to Ravage does come through. Looks like he might lose his life, he rules his life, two gems on the ground, and they're going to be able to pick up both gems, and no side is actually going to be able to do much, I mean, they're just going to be able to lick their wounds, that's about it. That was a ridiculous, a, a ridiculous steal from Rubik, able to turn the fight, and uh, I didn't I didn't realize life still still got life leads, or a feast, uh, while he was while he was dueling Legion, like, I thought Legion Commander was going to win that fight, because I thought feast got disabled, but clearly feast doesn't get disabled, guys. And the way Legion Commander's ulti works is uh, basically how it works is whenever you doom somebody, or whenever you ult on somebody, it dooms both of them, like both Legion Commander and uh, the enemy. And those two people are forced to stand there and uh, duel. And, oh, jeez, so much damage. Anyway, Courier does go down. I think that was a Radiant Courier. Uh, Life Stealer. Looking pretty desperate. That, that seems to be a Rapier, guys. That looks like a Rapier to me. I don't know about you guys, but that looks like a rapier. Technically speaking, you can disassemble your A blade and get a rapier. So Life Stealer has a rapier right now if he wants it. Because if, if I'm mistaken, a ra or, oh, sorry, Abyssal Blade is built with a Basher plus a Sacred Relic. And if you disassemble your Basher, of course you get your Basher and your Sacred Relic back. And that's basically a rapier right there. So Life Stealer has a rapier. Just gonna go ahead and throw it out there. Technically speaking, Life Stealer has a rapier. For all intents and purposes, Life Stealer wants a rapier. 
This is why he had the image. So Aziz goes to Slark, and Goldgraf has shown us that it went to hell, uh, probably in a handbasket. Uh, Lejans are at a 10k gold advantage, despite the fact that they were behind by so much. Like, that's a huge, huge swing in Goldgraf. Like, that's 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 a ridiculous job. Like, there's basically a 20k gold worth, or gold change, um, over the course of this entire game. And it looks like Lejans are going to be able to sustain this. I mean, they're, they have Goomba on the back foot. Economically speaking, uh, Goomba are damaged because that middle Raxus is gone, and also they have to worry about their Ancient because somebody can just walk in here and backdoor this. I mean, it's not gonna. No, I didn't, I didn't realize Ancient had a Regen. I thought Ancient like all over the towers, they had a Regen. Okay, never mind. The Ancient might be able to heal up quite a bit, but still, all this said and done, it looks like Lejans are gonna be able to just. Ha this is their game to lose right now. They're gonna be able to just walk on in and get the kill on top of uh, anything that they want. It's gonna go ahead and pick off the rest of the re remaining outer Raxus, or outer towers. Raxus all the way to the left. And Quicks, of course, needs to be careful. He has an MKB of his own. The builds coming out from Slark and also from Lifestyle actually looking pretty identical. The only difference is that Slark has a BKB and Scotty, whereas uh, Lifestyle has a questionable at this point uh, Sanji Asha and AC. Um, at this point in the game, I think Sanji Asha is not really all that worth it. Like, like just, just go ahead and upgrade that into something bigger. Uh, looks like Lifestyle has uh, something on mind. He spent his gold somewhere. Where'd he go? Did he buy that? Hold on, something changed. Oh, right, 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 Lifestealer finished up MKB, right, right, okay. Lifestealer finished the MKB instead of building a rapier, guys, my apologies. Sorry I was getting too hyped, my bad, my bad. The hype officially ceased. Oh yeah, Lifestealer has himself an MKB now, so that was his choice. That was his choice of items. And it's gonna continue through and just continue to stall. I mean, the longer they stall, the better off it is for Goomba. It, they they kind of want to force Lejans into their base right now. Slark has the Aegis, so if that does time out before these guys do fight, then Slark will be a little bit, in a little bit of trouble. But at the very least, at the very least right now, uh, Goomba will have the advantage as long as they keep turtling. So I don't know how hard they can actually turtle. Um, sorry, they, they don't have the advantage, but they're okay just as long as they keep turtling. Uh, they can't afford to actually leave their base because, like I said, the Ancient's exposed. Rubik, nice little blink counter from him. He does telekinesis on top of Rubik, and, or he does telekinesis on top of Legion. Legion actually gonna go for a duel. No, she forced to go back go back away. So he's gonna get the nice little, uh, nice little overwhelming odds. Probably wanted the uh, press the attack because press the attack's a little bit better. For his purpose, at least. Did he just, he just tossed it? Okay. I, I I guess he thought those were his creeps, but those weren't his creeps. Confusion? Confusion much? And the game continues on, guys. I was about to call this game all the way over, like, what, 10 minutes ago, but looks like Goomba able to just rush out with two buybacks and three people come back alive at the same time, able to just win a team fight and uh, force Lejans all the way back. They did sacrifice their, their racks, or their nah, middle tier 4 towers. So if they do end up winning this game, this will be all attributed to that, but Puck is actually hanging out at the top. Exist, uh, Exist has boosted channel, so she can TP back into this fight if she needs to. Um, so we'll see how these guys decide to play it out, but it looks like they might need to just go for some, like, you know, next level special tactics or something, like just try to have Puck bait these guys up top and possibly get himself a nice little kill on top of somebody who just shows up for solo kill on top of Puck. Like a 1v1 fight right now wouldn't be good for the Johns because Puck is there and also Lifestyle is there. So they probably know Lifestyle is inside of Puck. Uh, Puck can actually TP in if she needs to too. So she's gonna go ahead and take the long way and walk on through. It should be soon. Oh, nice four staff for Rubik. Actually pulling Legion Man into a basketball. Beautiful Ravage coming up from time to time. The double Ravage is gonna be there. Yes, it is gonna be there. Legion can make this turn to a piggy. She's gonna be going down here in a few seconds. So much happening so fast. BKB finally getting popped by Legion Commander. And now we got Slark forced out with his ulti time. He does go down for his troubles. Puck showing up in the middle of the fight. Lifestyle showing up as well. Here comes a duel from Legion Commander. Time to will be the one to die. Legion Commander having so much going on her way. Now we got the fight continuing. Time to immediately buy him back. Getting hit with the casket. No ulti available. All he can really do is just put his body here. Um, looks like everybody's gonna be forced back to heal up. Chill. Actually getting slowed up by quite a Bit, and that's like nice little, nice little damage coming from Rubik. Just forcing uh, Blink Daggers down. And now we got the Blink coming forward on top of, uh, top of Venomancer. So he actually misses, ironically. Uh, but it's like that just. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know. Never want to call Goomba out because I, I was about to call him out here a few seconds ago. Anyway, still going all the way on top of Slark's head. Slark actually might be going down. He's, oh, that's Leech Commander. Leech Commander might be going down here a few seconds. She is going to be going down. She does die. Not what you want to have happen. Meanwhile, Slark, I don't know if he, um, his Aegis is gone right now, but I think it is. We got Lifestyle about to be going down. Oh my gosh, a huge loss, and he does die. GG's do come out immediately from Goomba. They lost their linchpin. And now Chill's going to be forced to run away. He's going to be dying here in a few seconds. Yeah, it looks like he dies just in time. Ancient does explode. That's going to be it, guys. Interesting game. Goomba definitely put out the fight, but Lejan's able to just have just enough to win the game. 
I mean, as much as I talked about it, the lineup for the Johns ended up working out for him at the end. So, well played, well played, Goomba. Life Stealer. I think Life Stealer's a good idea. But sadly, it wasn't enough. Sadly, it wasn't enough. Anyway, that's going to be it for this game, guys. Um, my name is Cool Blue. I suppose you guys this game in the Join Dota League of Goomba versus LeJohns. LeJohns, of course, put on a fantastic uh, fantastic display of awesomeness. And Goomba put up a fantastic defense, but sadly, it wasn't enough. And that's going to be it. So, if you guys want to check me out more of my stuff, you can check my YouTube, which is youtube.com slash coolbluedota. That's C-U-L-B-L-U-D-O-T-A. You can also check me out on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash coolblue. Um, I post my VODs on YouTube. I do my live streaming on Twitch. And... Yeah, that's it. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you guys whenever.